you boys are family. No use getting bent out of shape about little stuff. Just let it be water under the bridge. Now, here's five bucks and some pocket lint. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 differences between the Cuphead show and game. Nobody for kills black market goods like you do, talk rhymes. Shh! Don't use my real name. I like to keep a low profile. For this list, we're looking at the differences between the hit 2017 video game Cuphead and the 2022 animated series from Netflix. In case you haven't seen the Cuphead show yet, here is your spoiler warning. Did you notice anything change between the two? Share with us in the comments below. Number 10. Cuphead's Greed In the game, Cuphead and Mugman get caught up in gambling at King Dice's casino. However, a bad dice roll on Cuphead's part results in the brothers having to give their souls to the devil. The animated series makes a rather noticeable change to the narrative. Instead of a casino, Cuphead and Mugman run amok in a carnival. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, Cuphead. That was great! And we still have time to get supplies and fix the fen! Cuphead? Being the reckless one, Cuphead gets carried away with his winning streak, not in a game of craps, but rather skee-ball. Mugman causes him to mess up, resulting in Cuphead losing the entire game. <laughs> Cuphead! Watch it! Loser! This change was likely made so that Netflix wouldn't have to put up with the potential backlash of depicting gambling in a show aimed at kids. Number 9. The Story the origin of Cuphead's story wasn't the only thing that changed. The overall story itself got a significant overhaul. In the game, Cuphead and Mugman make a deal with the devil to go collect souls of those in debt to him, thus leading to the boss gauntlet adventure. The Cuphead show simply shows the brothers fleeing from the carnival and only touch upon the plot again for two more episodes before kind of abandoning it. <sighs> You don't just get to run away! It sort of turns the IP into another kid show that's using someone else's toys. Couldn't they have just sent the boys on an epic odyssey across Inkwell Isle? Perhaps they thought folks didn't want a retelling and would prefer something new. Who's to say? We rode rides, and you owe the devil your soul. We played games, and you owe the devil your soul. We're even almost finished with this dumb fence, and you owe the devil your soul! Eh, I ain't too worried about it. Number 8. Deadly Snaps Another key aspect of the Cuphead video game was how Cuphead and Mugman could attack bosses. The two could not only create projectiles by snapping their fingers, but they could also unleash powerful attacks to devastate their enemies. The Netflix series makes no allusion to that whatsoever. The brothers often get out of their sticky situations through silly antics and not so much fighting. Hey! You stupid bums didn't pay! And you stole our five bucks! Come in! Whoa! Whether it misses the point of the game is in the eye of the beholder, but one can't deny how significant it is to scrap such an important part of the source material. Operator, get me the police! You ain't on the list. Sorry, boys, we gave it a shot. Number 7 Elder Kettle. Here's one part of the IP that the series expands upon. The game doesn't do much with the Elder Kettle character. He shows up in the starting location, brings you up to speed on what your objective is, and you don't see him anymore after that. The Cuphead show fleshes him out a bit more. No longer is he just Cuphead and Mugman's grandpa. He's a cranky old geezer who cares for the boys even when they get on his nerves. He's also a retired war veteran who spends some of his time tending to his garden. Though you are just babies now, merely bud and twig. If I give you all you need, you'll grow to be so bad! Oh, my back! Number 6. Ribby and Croaks these two were arguably the toughest bosses in the first area of Inkwell Isle. Ribby and Croaks could launch Hadoukens and transform into a slot machine in the game, but in the show? Yeah, don't expect to see any of that. The Cuphead show has redesigned these characters visually and narratively. Hey, hey, looks like we got a couple of VIPs on our hands. You still want the premium treatment, don't you? Uh, uh, uh. No longer do they wear familiar fighting gear, but zoot suits instead. And they don't really fight anymore, at least not since their boxing days. 
The most violence we see from them is when the two argue and start mindlessly punching, failing to do any real damage to each other. Ah, on fire! You say it, it's my fault? So what if I am? Number 5. King Dice Who's the host with the most? Mm? You are your handsome devil. Mwah. Oh, you're terrible. For some Cuphead fans, King Dice was a major highlight of the game, as he featured a unique boss fight that came in the form of a gauntlet run board game. However, this is another instance where the show removed aspects of gambling. Instead of being the owner of a casino, King Dice hosts a game show where contestants can earn the opportunity to walk into the mystery prize door. Now it's time to roll the dice! Roll any number and you go straight to the mystery prize room. Literally, any number at all is basically impossible to lose. And then I'll get what's coming to me! Couldn't have said it better myself. His singing has changed here too. The game features a song where King Dice has a singing voice similar to that of Louis Armstrong, but in the show, it's more like Cab Calloway. <laughs> Regardless of which version you prefer, you gotta admit that Wayne Brady's got the chops. Number 4. The Ghosts Wow, really starting to get dark now. Some might find that unsettling, but not me. Good thing we're both so brave. I can't think of a time I've been less scared. Nothing scary about a graveyard. It's just a yard. Guys, if we're playing, we have a yard at home. We should vacation here. We should live here. I never want to leave. With the number of bosses featured in Cuphead, we were honestly surprised with how few of them got a spot in the game. The start of the episode Ghost St. Real would lead one to believe the episode could feature the Phantom Express, a train from the first game that acted as a small collection of mini-bosses. Unfortunately, we got three normal ghosts that break out into a decent song. But what about ghosts? Ah, banana royal! Ghosts ain't real! <laughs> you hear that? We ain't real. <laughs> we ain't? The closest we get to any acknowledgement of a spectral train is when one of the ghosts opens a door that shows a train heading straight for Mugman. Number 3. Grim Matchstick I can sense within you the bravery required to complete this mission. You? Not so much. In the episode Dangerous Mugman, Porkrine sends the boys to Mount Eruptus. Thinking he meant the volcano Mount Eruptus, the boys begin their journey and retrieve a mysterious egg. Turns out Porkrine was referring to Mount Eruptus, the dry cleaning store. Where have you guys been? You were gone for three days. Well, what do you expect? You sent us all the way to the top of Mount Eruptus. Not the Mount Eruptus, Mount Eruptus Cleaners. After the brothers leave, we quickly learn that the egg they stole belonged to Grim Matchstick, one of the notorious bosses from the game. What's strange is that Grim Matchstick is nowhere near a volcano in the game, as his boss fight takes place around a lone castle tower. As for Mount Eruptus, well, no such location exists in the game. Number 2. The Root Pack The Root Pack doesn't have much of a significant role in the Cuphead video game. Our titular protagonist and his bro must simply claim the Root Pack's souls before moving on to the next baddie. The Cuphead show, on the other hand, makes the Root Pack out to be a rambunctious trio of mischief makers who siphon the life out of inanimate veggies to maintain their lives. Hey, I'm Pugs. Wanna get a drink? Heck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> While Sal Sputter and Ollie Bulb are, for the most part, the same in appearance as their video game counterparts, Psy Carrot no longer has his psychic abilities and is more of a musically inclined dunce. As for the fourth member, Horace Radish, nowhere to be seen. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Miss Chalice Kindly turn that down! I hate music! We're not playing music! Miss Chalice is perhaps the most interesting, as she has yet to be implemented into the video game, not until the Delicious Last Course update in June 2022. What we do know about her in the game is that she's on a mission for a character named Chef Saltbaker. The show makes no mention of such a character, at least not in the first season. Instead, Miss Chalice is a troublesome rascal who manipulates people into getting what she wants by putting on the charm. You gotta slap on a smile, throw in some cap, and be sure to put a spring in your step cause you can get anything by turning up the charm! It's an interesting left turn for a character that we don't know much about in the original source material, 
but it's going to be even more interesting to see how the second season will continue the story after the delicious last course is released. Sorry, boys. I like ya, but not enough to tangle with the cops. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.